you guys hear me good? Boom, boom, check. Can you hear me now? So yeah, my name is Brandon, uh, or you can call me Brandon Dom, and I'm going to tell you a story, and it's going to be pretty intense. Uh, so I would really appreciate it if you guys listened up and gave your attention, uh, make you feel happy. And um, if you have a question that first, feel free to ask. So, you guys okay? Alright, cool. So, my story actually begins with my mother. And my mother was traumatized as a young girl. And after a few failed marriages, she became a victim of rape. And she got pregnant through this ordeal. And I came from this. I always thought I was a mistake. I thought I wasn't meant to be here. My mother, in addition to having trauma, had a alcoholism. We were poor. I'm talking about government cheese and the top ramen to eat. And I uh, was uh, molested at age four. Didn't know what that means, but I was really confused, really insecure about it, really frustrated. Never good in school. Cried in second grade because I couldn't add double digit numbers. And then fast forward to 10th grade, my mother was committed into a mental institution. My first love, young love, broke my heart. And I was failing school. I had no plans on ever going to college. I was so depressed. Not only did I consider suicide, but I would fantasize it on a daily basis. And then eventually, I was tired of it. I decided not to care for boom, boom, check. I decided not to care anymore. And I took all this anger and frustration inside and started to take it outside. One of the first things I started to do was fight. I'm not talking about little fights, I'm talking about blood splattered all over my fists and forearms. So I'd go into the next fight with my hands raw. And then with this lifestyle, I started to steal, drive around in stolen cars, sell drugs, you name it. I would not have admitted this back then, but when I was that young, I was screaming for help. But before anybody could hear me, I started messing with the wrong people. These guys were talking about killing me. At 16, I got a gun for protection. I never wanted to use it or hurt anybody, but I didn't want to be hurt. The first thing that happened went to a 7-Eleven to go get a Slurpee, and uh, somebody flipped me off. And I, by this time, I had a reputation. I had friends and respect, and I didn't really need to prove myself. And this guy came up to surround me, and I, and I tried to say, hey, I don't know you. Uh, I'm just going to go get my Slurpee. And he went to punch, throw out a punch, and I just pulled out this gun. And something happened that I never anticipated. It was this bully before me was cowering. And all of a sudden, I had this instant rush. And I finally felt in control for the first time in my life. And guess what? This guy that was on me was like, oh, my dad. Yeah, and I was like, that's right. I'm going to go get my Slurpee, right? So uh, from there, guess what happened, though? Nobody got hurt. Nobody got in trouble. And even if I did, I was just a kid. So. Went to the next situation, got into a fight, boom, boom, check, and went out a little bit. I think it might be in front of the speaker. But I uh, went into a, a party, got into another fight, somebody pulled out a gun, started firing, I pulled out mine, not happened, but in the sky, just to scare him. Guess what? Again, nobody got hurt, nobody got in trouble, and even if I did, I was just a kid. So I went around with this, by the way, I said this is an invincible fable. I thought I was not going to be in trouble or hurt. The truth is, it's just a matter of time. And then at the age of 17, my buddies came over one morning. One was beat up really bad. They told me how these guys jumped them. They didn't even have to say anything any further. I grabbed my gun, went to meet these people that were talking crazy. And a uh, word for exchange, adrenaline's pumping. I wanted to go home, but I didn't want to let any of my friends down. So I pulled up the gun, aimed it at the car, thought nobody's going to get hurt, nobody's going to get in trouble, and I shot twice. As the bullets exploded through the barrel of the gun, I realized that I cannot be doing this. I'm making this world worse, and I need to stop. Unfortunately, the bullets were speeding through the sky. I did not know what happened next. We took off. Long story short, one of the bullets penetrated through the trunk of the car, lodged into a speaker magnet four inches away from somebody's neck. And that could have been somebody you loved. That could have been somebody I could have went to college with over some really silly stuff. Guess what? Although I was 17, went to the court finally, the judge sentenced me to four years in prison as an adult. The day the judge sentenced me, I felt like I died. Not only was I going to a terrible place where terrible things happened, I feared for my future for the rest of my life. And guess what? The next morning I wake up in prison and I realize something. Hmm, it felt like you died yesterday. Well, guess what? You're not dead. So if you had one more chance to make a change, what would you change? And I asked myself a simple question. I said, 
What would you change if you had one more chance? If you woke up today alive, and I said I would change everything. And uh, it's not easy to do, and uh, first is not the best place to start, especially what happens next. First thing somebody tell me, I'm, just a, I'm a teenager, going into prison, I'm a million miles away from home, I don't know if anybody's scared. And then this guy, we call him Sellies, Cellmate, didn't say hello to me, didn't say how are you doing, he said, if anybody ever calls you a punk, you hit them. No matter how big they are, you just hit them. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right. Had no idea what he was talking about, though. That seemed like a silly word, right? But as months went on, I realized that there was power behind this word in this place. I saw people get smashed and stabbed over a word. There wasn't a word, a list of words, a combination of words that was more detrimental than that. So I knew to respect it. And as time went on, guess what? Somebody eventually called me a pump over some stupid stuff. And then I did what I usually do, filled up with rage and ready to just do some mean things. But as I'm about to react, I said, hey, you said you were going to change everything. Well, that starts today, whether you like it or not. And then I asked myself a couple questions as I was pulsating with rage. I'm going to say jokes, okay, thank you. I said, why are you mad? Because he called me a punk. Well, are you a punk? No. Well, what if he said I had a unibrow? It doesn't matter, because I shaved it off the day before, right? So, uh, <laughs> but the point is, what he thinks of me doesn't really matter. I ask myself a list of questions. Is, is he going to give me a job when I get out? No. Nope. Is he going to give me into college when I get out? No. Nope. Is he going to give me a mortgage for my home and future family? No. Nope. Long run, this guy doesn't matter. I, I, I clenched my teeth, told him I'm sorry, walked away, patted myself on the back. But what happens when you're in prison and somebody calls you a punk and you don't do anything? Pretty much implies that you are a punk. So from that moment, as I'm on the big phone talking to my family or friends, people would come in and hang up. They would, they would love me as they played card, whisper, laugh at me. If, they, if I was trying to walk by, they would try to make me stumble. I kept my head up, my friends and family were like, keep your head up, right? And they were trying to do that, listen to them. Keep your head up, I kept, I kept my back straight, and when they looked at me, I made eye contact, like, just to show them that I wasn't scared, even though I was. And uh, long story short, um, they even stole a stuff from my prison cell in front of the video camera. Not sure how that happened, but I ended up confronting somebody about it. And this guy got into my face, and I'm like, now it's time for me to do something, otherwise it's going to get worse. But again, back in my head, you said you were going to change. He gets in front of my face, and I said, you know what, for the first time in my life, I'm basically trying to do what's best for me. So you guys can say and think whatever you want about me, but my people are out there, and I'm in here, and they don't need me in here any longer than I have to be. And I never would have guessed what would happen next. People are watching, by the way, playing cards with the corner of their eyes. They're looking through the little prison window cells and the doors. This guy turned this guy turned around and walked away. And I was like, uh oh, something bad is gonna happen tonight. Nothing happened. The next morning that guy came up to me and said, Hey, what you said to me made sense, and I respect you for that. And then from that moment, rumor went around and I stood up for myself, not one blood was dropped. Nobody messed with me from that day forward, call it coincidence or whatever. Next thing that happened was basically education. I told you I never, never liked school. I hated school. Uh, I basically failed school. The only reason I graduated is because girls did my homework. I was trying to impress the judge, and they let me pass classes even though I failed them. I entered prison with a ninth grade level education with no plans, like I said, ever to go to college. Nobody I knew went to college. I wouldn't have the money. It would never happen. So then I saw this sign that basically said, on average in the United States, people make more money the more education they got. Oh yeah, the more money sounds good to me. If that doesn't sound good to you, I don't know what to say. But that was my motivation. So I went to try to start school, and then I opened the book, and you could whisper this, but have you ever read a page and it's totally daydreaming about something else, and then flipped it and was like, what did I just read? I did that all the time. So what I did was like, hey, that wasn't helpful. Pick the book back up, read it again, and force myself to pay attention. Long story short, eventually, when I put enough time and patience and energy to a difficult problem, when I was just patient and said, hey, you can do this, you can figure this out, it would click and I would start understanding things. So I went from a slacker 
So soon the inmates started calling me the scholar. And uh, that was pretty weird, but also pretty cool. And then uh, something crazy happened. You may not understand, but God got with my heart, changed it, gave me a crystal clear purpose in my life when nothing was ever clear to be a counselor and work with youth. And not only that, to be an action force as part of that process, something I never even knew existed. And it was a pretty crazy idea. Didn't even think I could ever achieve it. After three and a half years in prison, I walked out without a scratch, without a fight, without anything terrible happening. Got out with 187 college credits and made it into a community college on a scholarship. It was amazing. Uh, the first thing that happened when I got out, guess who was there? My mom. Right there. And uh, I went straight to college within an hour after I got out of the boat. Went straight to college. I should have went home and took a nap. It was scary. Uh, I sat in college. And it was the scariest thing and the coolest thing at the same time. That night, uh, some people took some, actually a girl, took me out to a really fancy restaurant. I doubt anybody has ever been here, but it's Olive Garden. And, uh, <laughs> and three, three times a day, for, three, for four years pretty much, I would pick up my plates, pick up my plates after I ate. The book is called The Boy With The Gun, From Incarceration to Higher Education. You like that? From Incarceration to Higher Education? Question. You listen up, everybody will respect. I was literally giving up many times where I said, this is it, I'm done. The day that I was walking with my head, I was going to drop out of college. And I saw those crazy opinions and stuff, and that happened. So yeah, I was about to give up many times. Thank you for that question. Any other questions? Or maybe a little bit, right there. How long did it take you to write a book? That's a good question. How long did it take you to write a book? So again, I failed English. I have no business writing books. It took me seven years, and I put my heart and soul into it. For seven years, and not only that, guess what? I have another book. I have another book that's come out this year, getting published, and I finished the third book. And I have like, like, literally like seven books. I, I can't wait to start writing. But it took me seven years. Thank you. Carrying 
Again, this one going to Karen again to school every day to carry a book of Bibles to try to encourage people. And then the next thing that happened was I graduated from UW, first time, first one in my family ever to attend or go to college. It was a dream come true for me. And then I was like, all right, well, what's next? People said, hey, you should write a book. And I'm like, I, I failed English. I thought it was a good idea. But I decided to do it, wrote it, got an agent. I don't know if you know this, but Dr. Drew Pinsky, uh, somebody I looked up to, somebody I learned a lot from. I got a hold of some strange way. And I said, hey, I got this book, and I would really love it if you could read it. He read it on the plane home that night. He emailed me back and told me how much he, how much he loved it. And a uh, really cool situation. Got into a master's degree program, graduated with an honors with a clinical psychology degree, and then I started wanting to be a counselor. Here's the problem. You have a felony in the state, and you want to be a counselor or anything that's like that, pretty much they're not going to let you do it. People said, hey, you're not, gonna, you're not going to be able to do what you want to do, so just give up. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do, so just give up. I said, okay. Not tonight, though. So I applied to try to do it. I was denied. I denied that. They denied me. But after a year and a half of going through the court stuff, I officially won the state and now a licensed mental health counselor, child mental health specialist, and a chemical dependency professional. And guess what I do for work now? The dream that I had in a prison cell was to work with you and to go snowboarding, indoor skydiving, BMXing, surfing, wakeboarding. That's what I was doing last night. Shredding it on my Kanya, so now snowboard with a group of super cool kids, and uh, that's my job. And not only that, I'm now in a doctoral program working towards basically a PhD, and so eventually you call me Dr. Brown Allen. Thank you, thank you. Which was painful and embarrassing. And uh, so I was down and out. 
I found out, and uh, I was gonna give up. Here's the, the, the here's the, the cool part about the story. That night, I'm sleeping in the library, and I get an email. It was about this email that was about this fancy couple, and they were out on this extravagant outing. And this wealthy man picked up a penny off the ground, and the woman scoffed at him, like, why would you pick up such a filthy penny? And the man confidently replied, and just said, because what's inscribed, and God we trust. And I said, well, do I trust? And I thought about all my problems, and I was, I was hurting, like, physically, truly, literally hurting. Um, and I didn't believe it, I didn't, I didn't know what to think. That morning, I had, I had, I went to go shower in the gym, and I'm walking my head down, I'm so depressed, I'm so sad, and I saw about seven pennies over here on the ground. I'm walking, I saw another penny on the ground, another penny on the ground, and by the end of the day, I was like, that was the most penny on the ground I've ever, ever seen, but boom, boom, check, the most penny on the ground that I've ever seen in my entire life. Nothing changed, but the sort of feeling that I was like, hey, everything's gonna be all right, you just trust. And I decided to do that. A home became available on campus in the middle of the semester, which is crazy. With just enough money in my bank account to get the rents, I got a new job, got a new bike, got my cell phone worked out, and people kept saying, hey, and I was volunteering my time too a lot, and everybody kept saying, hey, don't volunteer, we need to take care of yourself. And because of the volunteer work that I did, just volunteering and hanging out, I ended up getting a Mary Gates leadership scholar from the Gates family to basically support my leadership ideas and use these action sports stuff. So, so we are about to come towards that time. But uh, one, a couple things I wanted to let you guys know is, uh, I told you, I said some kind of mean things about my mom, it seemed like, right? But guess, guess who visited me every week in prison? My mom. Guess who you got me a laptop when I didn't have any money to, to do school? My mom. She was there for me from the beginning. And, um, and I just encourage you guys, I know you all be with your parents. Has anybody ever been with their parents? Like, I know sometimes they're a little wacky, sometimes they're a little crazy, but at the end of the day, when everybody's gone, your mom, your dad, hopefully, your foster parents, your adopted parents are still gonna be there. And if not, your teachers are here to support you guys. So the purpose of this message, the purpose of this message is basically just regardless of the terrible things that you guys have been through, some terrible things. I didn't see any hands. No, I know we've done some terrible things. All right. And regardless of the dumb things you've done, you guys do some dumb things. Yeah, we all done dumb things. I know. I, I'm running the office. I'm running the office. I see these things. But uh, regardless of the terrible things you've been through, and regardless of the stupid decisions that you continue to make, you can still dream. And if you focus on hope. Those dreams can literally become true. And I know education is probably not the funnest thing, but this literally, your teachers, the staff here, counselors here, they will support you to get those dreams. And then the, all the things about education, you want to know what it proves to people? That you can finish what you start. You can finish what you start. And it was all about money for me, but now education is about, I get to expand my mind, I get to maximize my potential, I get to help people and encourage people. And I'm trying to think, you guys, you guys gonna get pretty restless? Everybody all right? But yeah, so we got a few minutes. How do you guys like the story? And, uh, this is the first school by the way. I'm a counselor here, so if you're having some struggles. A lot, of people, a lot of people think they're too tough and too strong, but the truth is, all human beings, boom, 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 check. Uh, there's a lot of services here, not just from our agency and me, but other services. You can get counseling here to chat it up, talk to somebody. I see a psychologist. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. I love it. So I encourage you guys to have a hard time. If you know someone that's having a hard time, let your school counselors know, let your teachers know, and get some. Somebody in their life to talk about these things. You do not have to do it on your own. And I, I've seen some of the pain that the school has been going through, and you guys have been going through stuff. So I encourage you guys, if you want counseling, let us know. If you have any questions, this would be a good time. I'll do a couple questions, 
And if you're too scared to ask in front of this huge group, which is totally understandable, I will be hanging out. And uh, if you want some books, I, I give you that discount. They're like 14 bucks or 13 bucks online on Amazon, but you can buy them for like seven bucks if you want. And if you have any questions, feel free. But any questions?